I'm a test pilot for Sikorsky, a Lockheed Martin company, and I absolutely love flying the S97 Raider. This is the sports car of helicopters. It is a very fast helicopter. Most helicopters go in the range of 140, 150 knots maximum speed, and the S97 Raider goes 210 knots. We've built two other X2 technology aircraft that go more like 250 knots. And it is a blast to fly this machine. So let's come down here. So behind here is where our main gearbox is. And so power comes from the engine into the main gearbox. And normally that main gearbox would drive a main rotor and a tail rotor. Now that main gearbox drives your two main rotors that are turning in opposite directions, as well as a takeoff shaft for the pusher prop in the back. And what helps us to go fast, normally helicopters are limited by something called retreating blade stall. But because we have a blade that is advancing on both halves of the helicopter, we no longer are limited by retreating blade stall. And we could probably go up to 270 knots if we had the uh, amount, the power necessary for that. But uh, this aircraft was designed around 210 knots and that's where it goes and the bigger aircraft at uh, 250 knots. And Bill, how important is it that you're managing to achieve these sorts of speeds in terms of what the mission profile could look like? So there, there are a couple of things there. So because of the way we produce the, the bulk of our lift on the advancing half of the rotor discs, right, um, it's more efficient to produce that the lift that way. We have a lower angle of incident. And so we're traveling, uh, uh, we have lift over drag efficiencies that are more equivalent to a turboprop aircraft than a helicopter. And we've had varying results on our different platforms in terms of how efficient they are, but it's more efficient. And, and how important is it that we go fast I think that depends, right? Like if you're that guy on the highway that's called for the medevac aircraft to come get them, speed is really important to you. Uh, same thing for the combat troop that's pinned down out there on the battlefield and he needs the help of an attack helicopter. He needed it there yesterday. And so, you know, instead of going 150 knots, 250 knots is pretty huge to, to those uh, individuals. Absolutely. And something this platform is certainly advancing at with great speed. now. How do you manage to maintain the low speed handling qualities or characteristics, but yeah. still going faster? Talk me through that one a little bit. Bill. Sure, it's, it's, uh, it's still a helicopter at heart. We've got the uh, rotor up there. The rotor is always up there. And uh, it actually has fantastic low speed handling qualities. The bigger craft Defiant, we flew sideways at 56 knots. Sideways uh, at 56 knots. Right? Who doesn't love a bit of that? Yeah, that's just good fun, right? <laughs> uh, this aircraft we've flown uh, in side flight at uh, 35 knots. And so uh, it's a helicopter at heart and it has the advantage of having the pusher prop capability to add in when necessary. It's also fly by wire. So we can program the aircraft to fly for the specific mission. If it's a degraded visual environment where it's night over water that you're flying the machine, then we can have a set of control laws that allows for greater stability. If you're flying in the clouds, we have a set of control laws for that. If you're flying terrain flight and you want to hug the earth uh, in order to be survivable and avoid all of the threats out there, we have a mode of flight for that. And we've We've tested all of these various uh, flight control modes in many fly-by-wire aircraft that Sikorsky's built. Can we take a look at the cockpit, Bill? Sure, come on in. How many hours have you personally flown on it? So, uh, the Raider aircraft between, this is aircraft one mm -hmm. and aircraft two is in Florida. I flew that last week and I think they're flying it again either today or tomorrow. And um, uh, we have 175 hours uh, between the two aircraft and I, I don't know, I have a lot of those 175 hours and, and the big aircraft, Defiant, we flew a little over 60 hours and I flew every one of those uh, flights on the uh, large aircraft and um, uh, so cockpit. I like the fact that we have a nice recline angle in the seat so one of the 
big advantages of this aircraft is, think about a helicopter when it comes into land or any of the combat films you may have seen where the helicopters are coming into the landing zone. The last thing they do as they come in is they pull the nose way up. And uh, now I'm going someplace I've never gone before and I can't see where I'm going. And so uh, this aircraft, I don't bring the nose up when I land. I put the prop in what is effectively beta range mm -hmm. and put negative thrust on that prop. And, and now it feels like I'm coming into the station on the Metro where I get the, the, the pull on my shoulder straps and uh, it, it's just a really great feeling. Now, <clears throat> the pilot's manually controlling that uh, thrust on the prop with a, with a switch that's on the collective. Push forward for more thrust, pull aft for less thrust. Now as I, as I come in and now I'm landing and I've got a lot of negative thrust on the aircraft, if I didn't do anything, I'd start backing up. So we don't want that. So you can push straight down on that same beeper and now it gets rid of all of the thrust on the prop and puts it in a neutral thrust mode. So you can just maintain your hover until people get on, people get off, whatever's going on in that location. And then you uh, push forward, get some thrust and maybe tilt the rotor over like a normal helicopter and, and get out of there. Bill's making this sound super easy, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to do it, to do it myself. Ah, if we had the simulator here, I could have you <laughs> flying it in five minutes. I might hold you to that one day, Bill. But what, tell me, what does the upcoming test campaign look like? You mentioned this variant here is no longer flying, but its sister ship is still keeping the flag flying. Yeah, so uh, we're maturing X2 technology. I think that there are a number of pursuits around the world that we think that uh, X2 is, a, is an awesome uh, uh, opportunity for, for those programs that we could provide them some capability that doesn't exist today. And so we're maturing X2 mm -hmm. technology. Uh, last week, one of the tests we did on Raider was to fly a different center of gravity and weight condition than we've flown on the aircraft. So we're kind of going around the CG and weight envelope and, and filling it out and seeing what we can learn. Uh, a couple of months ago, we did this test called higher harmonic control. Now, the loads coming in from this really rigid rotor system uh, can be a little bit high. And so most modern helicopters have something called active vibration control. Now active vibration control, it measures the vibrations around the aircraft and you put masses with force generators around the aircraft and they spin in order to nullify those vibrations and it provides a nice ride quality. But uh, the old adage of uh, if you want to be airborne, you got to be thin, like just adding mass around the aircraft is not a really <laughs> good idea, right? So um, how, what can we do to not need uh, masses around the aircraft for this vibration control? Well, we got these main rotor servos that drive the main rotor. What if we were able to drive them at the frequency of the vibrations coming into the aircraft in order to mitigate those uh, vibrations? Uh, turns out we crushed it and we were able to do that and so uh, you know our, our our system isn't designed for that and so we only did it for short periods of time but if you designed the system for for high uh, for that then which this specifically was, was high and hot conditions yeah yeah well I mean if you design your main rotor servos to be able to push at those higher frequencies <laughs> then absolutely it could uh, you, you you could mitigate the loads coming into the airframe without having to put mass units around the airframe. Let's take a walk and see this pusher configuration, which sure. I, to my inexperienced helicopter knowledge, Bill, I believe is something of an unusual thing among rotorcraft. Sure, sure, absolutely. So this is the pusher prop, I guess the business end of uh, what makes an X2 technology aircraft go fast. And in high speed flight, 90% of our power is going to the pusher prop and 10% to the main rotor system. Now, we add a bunch of automation to it to make it easy for the pilot. In low speed flight, you need a lot of, the power required to hover is, is relatively high. In fact, most rotorcraft, you design the uh, amount of power you need based on uh, I want to hover at this atmospheric condition with this many troops on board or this payload. Uh, these aircraft are designed around how fast do I want to go? And so the fallout is you have some extra power left over in the hover. 
but um, so if I'm in a hover and I've got a lot of power to the main rotor, I can't just firewall the prop and put all the power back here to the prop because I don't have that much power in the engine to be able to do that. So the flight control computer automates that for the pilot. The pilot can ask for all of it and the flight control computer says, hmm, you can have this much. And then we, as we start accelerating forward, the power required on the main rotor goes down and as that power demand for the main rotor goes down, it gives feeds more and more power to the pusher prop so that you can just accelerate it away. But the pilot doesn't have to sit there and incrementally dole it out to the prop. I ask for all of it, just give it to me when you can give it to me. And similarly, like a classic uh, uh, helicopter um, attribute is the main gearbox uh, has a torque limit. All main gearboxes and helicopters have a torque limit. And uh, most helicopters allow the pilot to over torque that main gearbox. And more often than not, it's because of pilot error when they over torque mm. it. And so there's some discussion over like, ah, should we preclude the pilot from being able to over torque it with some automation? Um, I would rather have the pilot uh, be able to over torque that main gearbox because if you're going to hit the ground really hard, I would rather over torque the main gearbox than hit the ground really hard. And so that's kind of a, a, a philosophy on, on main gearboxes. But this, the, the power to the pusher prop is, is not going to prevent me from hitting the ground or, or, or precluding some tragedy. And so we we also limit the amount of power that can go to the, through the prop gearbox. Sure. We have a torque limiter. And so the flight control system will not allow the uh, prop gearbox to pull more power than the, than the gearbox is rated for. And all of that, the pilot doesn't have to think about. Put the power in, give it to me when you give it to me. Bill, I know there's a reason that friends and colleagues are tell telling me to get more into helicopters. And this is certainly a project that I'm excited for. When might we see an operation into service? So at this point, uh, we are just doing development on this aircraft and uh, the, the large uh, Sikorsky Boeing Defiant that we program that we did for the Flora, Flora program mm -hmm. with the U.S. Army, uh, that aircraft is in the museum at Fort Novacell. And we're, we're continuing development on the S-97 Raider in anticipation of uh, uh, finding a customer and um, we'd, we'd love to provide this awesome capability to a customer in the near term. And we could be looking at an international customer as well as a domestic one? Absolutely, absolutely. It has, it has a lot of uh, possible applications. Uh, medevac, uh, assault troop transport, and uh, uh, even a gunship. Um, I talked about how you size these things for power uh, with how fast you want to go. So the fallout is on a large two engine version that goes 250 knots, you can go between 200 and 210 knots on one engine. Because of how steep that drag curve is on, on a machine with rotor systems mm -hmm. and such, 210 to 250, that's what that second engine gets you. But for a combat aircraft now, ah, I can get my prop shot out and I can still go 150, 160 knots. I can lose one engine and I can still go 200 knots and I can still hover at Mission Gross Way. Well, a lot of applications, lots of exciting features. Bill, I wish you all the best with the continuation of the flight test and the program. And we look forward to seeing hopefully lots of customers taking advantage of these great capabilities soon. I hope so too. Great. Thanks Thank for stopping and much. spending the time.